Thank you, Katie. And hello, thank you everyone for being here today. Again, my name is Tanya Berry. I am the Senior Vice President of Transformation and Engineering here at Consumers Energy. Excited to be joined by two of my colleagues, again, Greg Salisbury, Vice President of Electric Distribution Engineering, and Chris Laird, Vice President of Electric Operations. We are here today to share some exciting news on our journey to deliver a stronger and more resilient grid. Today, we're gonna to introduce our new plan, which is called the Reliability Roadmap. In this Reliability Roadmap, we outline our plans and our commitments for our customers. Not only the commitments, but it actually details how we plan to deliver on those commitments. Now, let's be honest, we know that demand for energy is increasing, we know that and severe weather threats are becoming far too common. Our job, number one, is to provide safe, reliable, and affordable electricity to our customers. This roadmap will allow us to do that. Also, while considering being clean and equitable for all customers. But this plan, or the roadmap, will require continued investments. We have to put some technology on the system, and also we'll need support from our regulators and other key stakeholders. But once you see the roadmap, I know that this roadmap is going to transform how we deliver electricity and how we serve our customers in the state of Michigan. Now this roadmap includes two goals, very ambitious goals, I must say. Number one, there will be, our customers will not experience long outages. We will have no more than 100,000 customers out during any event. Number two, wait for it. This plan says all customers, all customers will be restored within 24 hours. Now, I know those goals sound pretty ambitious. They're actually the most aggressive goals we've set as a utility on our electric system. But what I know, Consumers Energy stands on a foundation of leadership and innovation in the energy sector. That's why I am confident that we are prepared to not only deliver for our customers, but for the planet. Now with that, I know you're curious and you wanna know a little bit more about this plan. Uh, and so I'm gonna turn it over to Chris Lair, our Vice President of Electric Operations, who's gonna share what we're already doing to take those steps forward. Thank you, Tanya. Good morning, everyone. Our top provider, or excuse me, our top priority as an energy provider has always been ensuring customers have the energy they need at a price they can afford. Honoring that responsibility has historically required continuous innovation. We're no stranger to that. But the last decade has brought on increased weather challenges. Our understanding of how energy we use can impact the planet has grown exponentially but so has the number and intensity of extreme weather events across our system. To meet these challenges requires both to increase the speed at which we make improvements to the grid, while also exploring new tactics and implementing new technology. We plan to invest $1 billion annually, accelerate and expand our work to replace or rebuild poles that can withstand speeds of over 100 miles an hour. Explore a pilot undergrounding to program to better understand the most efficient and cost effective areas to make sure that we underground. Accelerate and expand our tree trimming process. Make sure that we're eliminating limbs from touching our lines and clearing our right of ways. And continue investing in and expanding our use of smart technology and automation to improve customer experience and better monitor our system. We've already started to make plans in place. We've hired over 350 apprentices that will become qualified journeyman linemen. We've hired nearly 100 underground workers that are being trained right now to help us expand the undergrounding portions as we go forward. Our nearly 2 million electric customers expect a grid that can power their homes and businesses no matter what mother nature throws at them, and we're going to give that to them. I'll hand it over to Greg Salisbury. Thanks, Chris and Tanya, and good morning, everybody. At Consumers Energy, we know that keeping the lights on is job one. We know how frustrating and expensive outages are for our customers, 
And as part of building this roadmap, we've been listening to our customers. And I'm proud to say that we're bringing them the answer to their, their concerns and their needs. We've also looked at the condition of our over 90,000 miles of lines, and we've spent months modeling future weather and growth of electrification of home appliances and transportation. And this roadmap prepares Michigan to meet those needs as well. We know that a stronger and smarter grid means a more resilient one, or a grid that's more prepared for the increasing severe weather events that we've had, whether it's ice storms, wind storms, or thunderstorms. We also know that doing this kind of work pays off. In 2022, we completed over 2,000 projects on the electric system, resulting in a 20% reduction in outages, and we look to accelerate those gains. We also know that not only weather will continue to change, but so are the energy needs of our customers. This roadmap is designed to reflect the growth of electric vehicle usage across the state and to prepare our system so that everybody can participate in that transformation. We also know that people will be transitioning away from coal and natural gas and using more heat pumps and more air conditioners because part of that weather modeling says it's gonna get hotter. And so as we transform the assets to be more reliable, we'll transform them to be ready to carry more electricity. We envision a future where customers know where their power is coming from, a grid built specifically to withstand the challenges of changing weather and the increasing demands, but also the need for affordability. Our evaluation of these practices across the country and with the Electric Power Research Institute tells us that if we do this work on a planned basis, it's 40% cheaper than if we wait to fix it after it breaks, inevitably in the middle of the night when the wind is blowing and conditions are terrible and we have trucks like these running all over the state. The use of new technologies and the exploration of hardening options like burying lines where there are so many trees that it's not cost effective to maintain the forestry will deliver the outcomes that Tanya mentioned. We are designing a stronger and smarter grid to deal with these changes. And there are five things that you can expect to see in this roadmap. The continued trimming of trees at a faster rate than we've ever done before, over 7,000 miles a year of trees trimmed. The continuing inspection of over 25,000 miles of those lines every year by our engineers. That's enough to go more than once around the globe. And we're gonna do that every year. The addition of fuses and automatic transfer, transfer reclosers so that when the grid does break, it breaks small and we know exactly where to go to fix it. The hardening of our system above ground where it's most cost effective with lines and poles and equipment that, that can withstand up to a half an inch of ice and 60 to 80 mile an hour winds and up to 100 mile an hour winds when there is no ice. We're preparing a grid that's almost hurricane strength as part of this roadmap. And finally, undergrounding. Our customers ask about it and we're bringing it to them in this plan. And we've shown that we can cost competitively underground in the areas where the trees are very thick and trimming them is cost prohibitive. And with that new workforce that Chris mentioned, our, our unit cost of, of bearing lines is getting more and more competitive every year. Finally, we're bringing smart grid automation so that when, the, when a wire does break or when there is an outage, we know exactly where it is. In the days of crews having to drive miles and miles to find the outage are in the rear view mirror because we're, we're gonna be able to drive right to the spot, make it safe and immediately fix it. We know that these commitments are bold, but we're ready. We've always known it's our responsibility to deliver clean energy reliably and affordably to our customers and to Michigan. And we're confident in our ability to deliver this roadmap. With that, we're happy to take questions. Go ahead. Yeah, um, Tanya, you mentioned um, that this plan would, would require some buy-in from, from regulators. Is that in an ongoing um, rate increase request or a future one? And, and how necessary is it for the, uh, the Public Service Commission to kind of give approval to, the, to this plan or any future rate increase request 
in order for consumers to kind of uh, uh, achieve this plan? Yeah, thank you for the question. So it definitely takes a partnership uh, to get this done. And we've already started sharing uh, parts of this plan with the um, commission. We'll file it and we'll have ongoing discussions where they'll be able to weigh in and provide input to make sure they're in agreement with the plans we have in place. And we'll continue to discuss that through our annual rate case filing. Will, will consumers conceivably seek an increase? Uh, will this be amortized in any way in your expectation by the ratepayers? I think we'll have to see how it plays out, right? So we have a responsibility when we look at affordability for our customers to make sure we're efficient with the dollars that we have and continue to spend. And so those things will be vetted out through the annual process that we go through with the commission. So this five-year plan involves about $9 billion total investment, and when we file our rate case in 2024 that funds 2025, you'll start to see the things that are outlined in the reliability roadmap, and it'll be a very transparent piece each year of the five-year plan that then shows up in the litigated rate case process. So we have about 50,000 miles total of low voltage distribution lines, which are the ones that serve homes and businesses and the circuits uh, in the territory. Right now, about 16% of that is underground, either by way of being new construction or legacy underground. Our, this plan calls for ramping up our undergrounding in an organized fashion year to year. And we think that if we could get another 5,000 miles that we choose strategically to deal with the biggest reliability concerns that we could just make a massive impact on those customers to see repeat outages from trees. Last question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this last storm we all experienced it here on the west side of the state is where the storm system kind of blew up over us here and then it made its way southeast and through Ohio. Give us a sense of the cost just in re-energizing the home and bringing in crews from out of state. What is the So a storm like that costs tens of millions of dollars. Um, more in the winter when there's ice and difficult conditions, maybe a little bit less in the summer. But the, the key point, and I mentioned it earlier, is by analyzing the circuits, looking for the risks, and then doing the work where we plan it. So we have people show up in the morning with the right material and the right number of crews and the right permits and traffic control. It's at least 40% cheaper to do those things in advance. So it's a huge impact and affordability by doing it through the roadmap as opposed to waiting for the severe weather and then fixing it when it's broken. Last, last no, you're fine, keep going. Uh, you know, this undergrounding wires is nothing new. I mean, people have talked about this for years. Why so slow to come to this conclusion now? So, a couple of factors have been important as we've looked at when is the right time to really hit the accelerator on undergrounding. Partly it's the technology associated with splices and underground junctions has come to a point where we can expect 50, 60, 70 year lives out of these underground conductors without having to take the extra expense of putting in conduits and concrete vaults. In the past, undergrounding technology just wasn't as reliable and finding faults in, un, in old legacy underground systems has been problematic. And we've had customers who've dealt with that and we didn't want to reintroduce those kind of risks. So as we've watched the technology emerge and looked at what's come out of the Electric Power Research Institute or EPRI, we feel like the time is now technologically speaking. With the construction practices that Chris's team has learned from studying the utilities around the nation who have done more undergrounding recently, we now can say that the cost of undergrounding a rural single phase line is par with the cost of hardening it above ground and then doing the tree trimming that has to be done year over year. So we can now bring to the policymakers and regulators a proposal that says dollar for dollar, we get better reliability and resilience um, underground for the same price as above ground.
Okay. As Tanya mentioned, this is a regulatory filing that we are doing. That's not going to happen until Friday of this week. Um, but we have news releases that we will be able to share with everybody so you can get a little flavor of it before it goes up into the official docket with the Michigan Public Service Commission.